Hi everybody, this is Nate from Cord Cutters, and today we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi 3. For the most part, this, this Raspberry Pi is not very different than the Raspberry Pi 2 that came before it. Uh, as you can see, it has the same standard uh, a power source, HDMI, AV. Uh, in the front, you see it has the, the regular old LAN, four USB ports. On the back, there's a micro SD card slot. Um, frankly, for the most part, it's, it's all basically the same. It has the same GPIO pins, uh, video header. Uh, I think this is a camera header, but I, I almost never use this, so I'm not really sure. Um, for the most part, looking at it, it just looks like a Raspberry Pi 2. If you've seen one of those, you've seen this. Uh, or, uh, or even a Raspberry Pi B+. Uh, and this is great news, because... For all of you who use cases to keep uh, to keep your Raspberry Pi cool, um, the CPU uh, uh, chip right here uh, can accept the same standard case adapters that have heat sinks uh, that 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 attach to them. So now that we've taken a look at the guts of the Raspberry Pi three, I think it's time to actually look and see how well it holds up. See how well it plays Cody various. Uh, the various things. Um, so to do that, what I've done is I've gone ahead and put the Raspberry Pi 3 into a case, um, the Flirk case, for those who are curious. It's a pretty nice metal case that I think looks nice in the living room. Um, and the only things attached to it are the HDMI cord, uh, the power cord, and a Flirk remote control uh, hub, uh, nub, whatever they're called. Um, and that's just for control because I don't have, uh, I don't have the fork, uh, excuse me, I don't have the Raspberry Pi connected to uh, CEC TV right now. Um, and so ideally, hopefully, this should just work. Uh, now, I've already set it up. Uh, as you can see, um, I've gone ahead and added movies and added TV shows and set up Cody pretty much wholly. Uh, and the only thing left to do is to see how well it actually runs. Um, so step number one, as you'll notice, I didn't hook up uh, Ethernet cable and I didn't hook up a uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi receiver or VLAN if you're European. Uh, so let's open up OpenELEC here and check the connections. And it looks like even in the metal case, the connection is pretty good. Uh, it's connected my network ASUS 2, and uh, everything seems to be working. Let's see how well it actually works in real life, though. Uh, so, first things first, we're going to take one of my favorite test videos, which is uh, the Pride and Prejudice movie. Uh, the reason, is I, it's not my favorite test video for any particular reason, other than the fact that it's a very high bitrate film that I have in my collection. Um, and makes for a pretty good test to see how well, uh, how well the 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 Kodi box that I'm testing um, ma manages to play back 1080p high bit rate uh, video. So let's see here. Pride and Prejudice, 1080p H.264. Um, this is running directly off of the Raspberry Pi 3's Wi-Fi. Let's see what happens. And it seems to be pretty much doing perfect. Let's skip forward a little. Skip to a minute. All right, so here we have a scene with an awful lot of motion, a lot of very fine detail, a lot of cows and pigs and water and ducks and everything moving. Um, in a second, we'll get to another scene with a, a high degree of motion, and we'll see if it chokes, and it definitely doesn't. Um, so this is pretty cool. Uh, the normal Raspberry Pi, well, the Raspberry Pi 2, or even the, the Raspberry Pi Zero, which I actually have right here, uh, it usually, uh, th th those devices never had any problem playing this video. What's really cool is that I'm able to play this high bitrate video using the internal Wi-Fi inside a, a, a metal box, the, the case that made by Flirk. So it's already pretty exciting that it's working so well. Uh, the next test I want to run, and this one's 
This one is easily the best reason to get the Raspberry Pi 3, in my opinion, or one of the great reasons. Uh, what, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to TV and channels, and I'm going to launch a 1080i, an interlaced 1080 uh, video that is MPEG-2. And I intentionally did not buy the MPEG-2 hardware decoder specifically so we could test this. What I want to see is how well the CPU of the Raspberry Pi 3 handles software decoding interlaced 1080 content. So we'll go ahead and launch CBS, which is a 1080 channel for me. And it doesn't seem to have any problem whatsoever. This is unfortunately a commercial, so it's not the best, the best test of video. Uh, but it, it seems to be doing great. It acknowledges 1080. Oh, here's a 1080 uh, commercial, um, all interlaced, of course, and and evidently with absolutely no problem. Uh, the video playback is absolutely perfect. And even if I pop up the controls like this, it seems to be working pretty great. If I pop out of the screen um, and I have the big UI popped up, um, even then, even while I'm controlling the UI and the videos playing, it's still managing to decode 1080i content without any problem, which is amazing. This is by far the most amazing, uh, in my opinion, the most amazing thing that this Raspberry Pi 3 can do. Because I don't think anything before this could. The, the, this CPU is, without a doubt, the best CPU they have on the block. Um... With that said, there are a few important caveats to that. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 um, doesn't allow cheating, uh, by which I mean with something like the Pi Zero or even the Pi 2, what, a lot, what I would do a lot of the time is just plug it into some random uh, USB port to power it. Um, and because usually it could handle having draws of, you know, two amps, five volts at two amps or, or even less. Um, and that wouldn't be a big problem. With the Raspberry Pi 3, that's a huge problem. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 really needs as much power as you can possibly give it. You need to stay within probably, frankly, you probably need to actually meet the spec of 2.4, uh, amps per, uh, five volt, 2.4 amps or 2.5 amps even if you've got things plugged in. Just because when it's doing things that are heavily CPU intensive, like decoding video or scanning in the library, um, it's gonna pull in a lot of power to do that. Um, and the more power it pulls in, the more trouble it has uh, keeping up. And, and what, you'll ha what you'll see then is at the top right corner of the screen, where this lady's head is right now, um, you'll get a little uh, a little square that looks like some kind of rainbow. And what that square is telling you is the CPU is having to uh, slow down uh, just so it can, you know, not shut down the whole computer or the whole Raspberry Pi. Uh, so you really need to keep it powered as much as you possibly can. Um, that may mean getting new power supplies uh, or, you know, any number of things. The, the key is... Uh, something like a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply is just not going to do the job. You really need it to be a 2.4, 2.5 amp power supply. Uh, with that said, I don't know. There's there's not much more to say. It's it's really pretty astonishing how well how well the Raspberry Pi handles just about everything I throw at it. It has no problem decoding video. Uh, it has no problem with high bit rate content. It has no problem using Wi-Fi inside of the metal box that is the Flirt case. It's it's a it's an incredible little piece of hardware that they put out for thirty five dollars, um, and I think that's about all I have to say about it. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to uh, mention them in the comments, and I'll probably do a follow-up video just to answer those questions because I'm sure there'll be some. But for now, you know, I, I don't see any reason at this point to buy a Raspberry Pi 2 anymore. It just It's just the Raspberry Pi 3 completely, completely uh, obliterates the need for it. Um, 
So there you go. Uh, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 2, though, and you're thinking of upgrading, I don't know if you really need to, especially if you've already got an HD uh, MPEG-2 decoder installed, uh, because, and you've already got a working system, because all this really brings is a slightly faster CPU uh, and uh, Wi-Fi, which is all cool, but but it's not necessary for an already set up system. For those who are buying for the first time though, Raspberry Pi 3 all the way, it's it's pretty cool. Um, all right, so thanks for watching. This has been Nate from Cord Cutters. You guys have a nice day.